This is Bob Capetta from the University of Illinois at Chicago, and this discussion is on telescoping series. So our goal is to prove that the following series converges, and we want to find its sum. So what does it mean for a series to converge? Our definition is that a series converges if the partial sums converge. So my goal here is going to be to create a sequence of partial sums and show that the limit as n goes to infinity of those partial sums is some number. So we're starting with the sum as k goes from 1 to infinity of 5 over k minus 5 over k plus 2. So my first term, a sub 1, let k equal 1. That's 5 over 1 minus 5 over 1 plus 2, which of course is minus 5 over 3. So that is the first element of the sequence that defines this series. Now let k equal 2, 5 over 2 minus 5 over 2 plus 2, which is 5 over 2 minus 5 over 4. Next k is going to equal 3, 5 over 3 minus 5 over 3 plus 2, 5 over 3 minus 5 over 5. Next one letting k equal 4, 5 over 4 minus 5 over 4 plus 2, 5 over 4 minus 5 over 6. These are the first four elements of the sequence that define the series. The series requires me to add all these up, a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 plus dot 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 forever. Does that sum converge? That's the question we're going to ask. To answer that, we need to think about the partial sums. Looks like I gave you a sub 5 as well. If k is 5, 5 over 5 minus 5 over 5 plus 2. All right. S sub 1. These are the partial sums. S sub 1 is just the first element. It's just a sub 1. So 5 over 1 minus 5 over 3. Now s sub 2, that's the second partial sum. That means add everything up to the second element. So s sub 2 will be this one, a1 plus a2. So 5 over 1 minus 5 over 3 plus 5 over 2 minus 5 over 4. My next partial sum, s sub 3, is a1 plus a2 plus a3. I'll add all three of these up. Then what is s sub 3? 5 over 1 minus 5 over 3 plus 5 over 2 minus 5 over 4 plus 5 over 3 minus 5 over 5. You'll notice I simplified that because something cancels. What happens? 5 over 3 goes away because I have negative 5 over 3 and positive 5 over 3. And I'm left with just 5 over 1 plus 5 over 2, then minus 5 over 4 minus 5 over 5. If I go to s sub 4, I'm going to add up this one plus this one plus this one plus this one. You'll notice the 5 over 3's will cancel, and you'll notice the 5 over 4's will cancel. So what are we left with for s sub 4? All of those, 5 over 1 is still there. The 5 over 3 goes away. 5 over 2 is still there. The 5 over 4 goes away. Minus 5 over 5 minus 5 over 6. So we have that for s sub 4. And then for s sub 5, the sum of numbers up through a sub 5, a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, we'll add all these together. Again, the 5 over 3's will go away, the 5 over 4's will go away, the 5 over 5's will go away. So if we add all those together, 5 over 1 is still there, 5 over 3 gone, 5 over 2 is still there, 5 over 4 gone, the 5 over 3 canceled that 5 over 3, the 5 over 5 is gone, then minus 5 over 6, minus 5 over 7. So we have S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. And our goal is going to be to determine a pattern because we want to take the limit as n goes to infinity of S sub n. But if we're going to get S sub n, we're going to need to see what that pattern is. Again, there's S sub 1, there's S sub 2, there's S sub 3, there's S sub 4, there's s sub 5. You'll notice I reordered the numbers in s sub 2 mainly because s3, s4, and s5 all started with 5 over 1 plus 5 over 2. So in the interest of consistency I rewrote s sub 2 as 5 over 1 plus 5 over 2 then minus 5 over 3 minus 5 over 4. Do we see the pattern here? The pattern doesn't hold for, 5, for s1 but it does hold for all the others. Namely, they start with 5 over 1 plus 5 over 2, and then they subtract two things. What do they subtract? What is being subtracted? 
5 over a number. Well, if n is 3, I get 4 here and I get 5 here. So if n is 3, 4 is n plus 1, 5 is n plus 2. Does that pattern continue? If n is 4 here, I get denominators of 5 and 6. 5 is n plus 1, 6 is n plus 2. If the denominator, excuse me, if the n is 5, the denominator is 6, n plus 1, the denominator is 7, n plus 2. So I hope you're seeing the pattern here. Once we establish the pattern of s sub n, then we can take the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n. So our pattern seems to be 5 over 1 plus 5 over 2 minus 5 over n plus 1 minus 5 over n plus 2. That is the sum of a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus dot 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 plus a sub n. The partial sums up to a sub n. Now, what is the limit of s sub n as n goes to infinity? That will give us our sum. That will tell us what our series is going to be. So that series is just the limit as, again, 5 over 1 plus 5 over 2 minus 5 over n plus 1 minus 5 over n plus 2 as n goes to infinity. Well, as n goes to infinity, this goes to 0 and this goes to 0. So all that's left is 5 plus 5 halves, which gives us what? Which gives us 15 halves. So indeed, that was a telescoping series. We proved that it converged, and we found that its limit is 15 halves. We found that the sum of that infinite series is going to be 15 halves. That's how it's going to converge. Let's take a look at one more example. Sum as k goes from 0 to infinity of 7 over the square root of k plus 1 minus 7 over the square root of k plus 2. So our process is going to be the same. We're going to find elements of the sequence a sub 0, a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, a sub 5. And we're going to add those together to find our s's. When I say s sub n, that means up to a sub n. So we're going to include 0 here. So it's just a little different than the first example, but you'll see the process is essentially the same. So this is what I start with. If k is 0, 7 over root 0 plus 1 minus 7 over root 0 plus 2, 7 over root 1 minus 7 over root 2, fine. If k is 1, what do we get? 1 plus 1, 7 over root 2 minus 1 plus 2, 7 over root 3. If we go to 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 7 over root 3, 2 plus 2 is 4, 7 over root 4. And again, resist the temptation to call that 2. We want to see the pattern. a sub 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5, 7 over root 4 minus 7 over root 5. Now s sub 0, that is just a sub 0, that's all it is. 7 over root 1 minus 7 over root 2. S sub 1 will be the 0 term plus the 1 term. S sub 0 will be 7 over root 1 minus 7 over root 2 plus 7 over root 2 minus 7 over root 3. You'll notice immediately that the 7 over root 2's go away. And I get 7 minus 7 over root 3. Next I will have S sub 2. So that's 0, 1, and 2. If I add those together, you'll notice the 7 over root 2's will cancel and the 7 over root 3's will cancel. So that all that will be left is 7 over root 1 minus 7 over root 4. So here it is. There's a sub 0. There's a sub 2. There's a sub 3. Canceling 7 over root 2. Canceling 7 over root 3. All that's left is 7 minus 7 over root 4. And I gave you enough terms to get S0, S1, S2, and S3. If I add all four of these up, you'll notice all the middle terms cancel and I am left with 7 over root 1 minus 7 over root 5. So take a look at that. Can you identify the pattern here? Look at this denominator. If n is 0, this denominator is 2. If n is 1, this denominator is 3. If n is 2, this denominator is 4. If n is 3, this denominator is 5. So in each case, the denominator was 2 more than n. Therefore, the denominator will be square root of n plus 2. And the series converges if the limit of partial sums converges. And as n goes to infinity, that limit certainly exists. 
So looking at this, taking the limit of those partial sums, that series will be the limit as n goes to infinity of those partial sums, 7 minus 7 over the square root of n plus 2. But as n gets large, this whole thing gets large. Therefore, this whole fraction gets closer and closer to 0. So we get 7 minus 0, so that that telescoping series has a sum of 7, and certainly it converges to that 7. And that will conclude this lesson.